Obama cutting people out. Okay, he just commuted a sentence for a, a guy that was was serving life for selling LSD. His name was Timothy Tyler, and uh, he's been the center of attention for everybody fighting against mandatory minimums uh, for quite some time. Um, and uh, basically what we found out about him was he was a young man with a history of psychosis and bipolar disorder as well as he suffered abuse at the hands of his uh, stepfather as a child. Before this uh, gentleman got snarled <clears throat> by the DEA he basically uh, already had gotten caught up in some drug cases so he was already on his th that was already two cases before this and then in the situation here he was on his way to a dead show and he was selling LSD to his friend and it turned out his friend was an undercover uh, narc the whole time and that's the dirty dirty secret of the drug war is it's it betrays you so bad that somebody that you trusted as a as a good friend and a confidant is the guy that puts the handcuffs on he's the guy that actually is a cop or he's a narc and narcs are even worse because they're just these dirty they have no center they're just they're they have no they're almost sociopathic as far as what they think about when it comes to other people they just really don't understand empathy whatsoever and the police just love it they don't I mean they don't care if they're building better drug cases or not they're gonna take some guy that they caught with a little bit of this and then they're gonna make him tell on his friend for having a little bit of that or selling something over here it's terrible so that's how he went down and uh, yeah, he only had probation for the first two uh, drug convictions, which probably says a lot about the situations that he was in and maybe the, the fact that when he appeared before the judge, they could tell. I mean, you don't have to be able to put your mental disorder in paper and submit it as a reason why a judge should feel bad and give you a lighter sentence. If the, if the option's on the table, they'll do it for a person like this. But not so much on his third time. Plus it was LSD, and that's a Schedule 1. And on that third strike, back in them days, <clears throat> in 1994, it got him a life sentence. In 1992, rather. Yeah, he got caught in 92, and his sentence in 1994 was life life for LSD and it wasn't I mean this guy wasn't some kind of kingpin that manufactured you know tubs full of acid and you know like mopped up his whole party and went to dead shows and made millions of dollars touring this, this isn't that guy this is just some poor kid really laid back probably just the mellowest cat you ever met and they just you know they studied him and they were like this is one of these guys we can do like this you know, you're talking about the cops killing people nowadays. Well, back then, they did some. They they were still killing them back then too. But I mean, besides that, they were using these drug laws to to ruin people's lives, put them in prison for life. And it wasn't even that they had a vendetta against these people. There's no way you could have had a vendetta against this kid. No way. Um, if, if you ever read about this guy's story, it's amazing. Okay, so during his late teen years and early 20s, Tyler was a deadhead. Uh, the, if you don't know what a deadhead is, I feel sorry for you, but a deadhead is somebody that just travels around the country watching dead shows. Obviously now it's a little bit hard to do since Jerry Garcia has been dead since 94, but as you go around the country and do these dead tours, you know, you notice that there's people that, that, that are they're there they're there for every show every tour it's a community they don't go away you know but so he was on his way to a show in California when the, when he got nabbed so and his dad was also implicated in this uh, so-called crime because 
his part of what he was doing to sell the LSD was shipping it in the mail. And he, he was using his dad's address to receive and to ship. His dad had prior conviction for marijuana and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. He didn't even make it. He died in 2001, eight and a half years into that 10 year term. And these are federal sentences, so you don't get good time. It's just when they say 10 years, you do 10 years. Tyler had previously rejected a plea deal that would have meant a far lesser sentence, according to CNN, but he refused to testify against his co-defendants, and one of them was his dad. So that's integrity right there. I mean, that's part of the thing when you're in the, the drug game uh, is the no narking thing. And a lot of people don't really stick to that. They talk a tough game until they're sitting in that hot seat and the cops are threatening their whole existence over some drugs. And all they got to do is pick somebody and do, I don't even know what they got to do, but it's terrible. So his guilty plea, Tyler said, was also given in part because the public defender didn't fully explain the guidelines of the mandatory minimum sentencing. He didn't know. So factors like his age and his mental health wasn't even taken into consideration. Like I said before, if it could have been taken into consideration, the judge might have automatically just done it. But since they didn't have to, and it's a mandatory life sentence, <clears throat> they would have had to jump through some hurdles to try to get it l lowered down, and they weren't willing to do that because his public defender was garbage like they always are. All right, in an interview with Rolling Stone in 2014, his sister Carrie said th though he had received some psychiatric treatment while in prison, Tyler spent most of his time in solitary confinement, which adversely impacted his mental state. Tyler reportedly wasn't even allowed to listen to music in prison until he was given an iPod in 2012. It's a long time to not listen to music, especially for a deadhead, man. That's cruel and unusual punishment, pure and simple. I see this guy having a big time lawsuit against everybody that, that got him where he was. Laws or no laws, man. Cruel or unusual punishment, that's a constitutional guarantee that you don't get. You know, I mean, when, when did we care about the Constitution anymore? I guess we don't. We're about to find out about more about that later. All right, so Tyler's case had gained not, you know, he, he had, there's a lot of people that really was backing this guy up. He had Rand Paul, you had like all kinds of Republicans, Democrats, deadheads, the whole dead community, organizations like Families Against Mandatory Minimums. Um, and at the time of his commutation, a change.org petition in support of Tyler had over 420,000 signatures. Number to note. Um, Obama has been calling to phase out these strict sentences for drug convictions, arguing that they lead to excessive punishment and incarceration rates unseen in de other developed nations. Man, unseen in third world countries. I mean, unless there's a dictator that just wants you gone forever, you, you really got to go far before you find these long jail sentences like this over drugs. I mean, this is ridiculous in America, man. This is America. We're supposed to be the land of the free? What is this about? White House counsel Neil Eggleston said the, com the com uh, commutations underscored the president's commitment to using his clemency authority to give deserving individuals a second chance. Why the, what do you mean deserving? You mean while they're in prison they didn't continue to behave or whatever? And I don't know. He said that Obama has granted a total of 673 commutations, more than the previous 10 presidents combined. On Monday's commutations, 35, including Tyler's, were for life sentences. What about those stories? How come you only hear about Tyler's? I got another one for you. Just hold your hold on to your seats. All right, but Tyler will still have to wait a bit longer for freedom as he is currently scheduled for release August 20th, 2018, conditioned upon enrollment in a residential drug treatment. Got a couple problems with those last two items there. First of all, why does everything got to take so freaking long? Like, wait a minute. Obama, the president of the most powerful guy in the damn world, just said, okay, this guy is good to go. Get him out of there. Oh, okay, man, we'll get him right on out of there August 30th, 2018. That doesn't even make sense, man. And he's got to go into an in-house drug place. 
This guy is not a drug addict. He's not a drug person. He's been in prison for so long, you probably don't even know what drugs are. Except for those stupid pills they probably give him all the time for his bipolar. <sighs> anyway, um, I'll be reporting more about this. But I just wanted to leave you with a few things from the Tyler files. All right. So, yeah, we found out that the White House did these commutations, 325 sentences in August alone, more than double the amount of community during the rest of his presidency, and more than the past 10 presidents combined. In an attempt to clear out a backlog of more than 11,000 clemency petitions. Remember back here, Obama said something about deserving individuals that would get that second chance. Well, um, so 325 sentences in August. I think his total number, yeah, 673 out of 11,000, bro. You're hardly batting fucking 500 here. I'm not happy with these numbers. And to say that that you got to you got a deserving, you got to be a deserving individual for the second chance. What are you talking about, man? These people were wrongfully stuck in a cage for way longer than they deservedly should be as individuals. Now, if you want to lump them into a ball of clay and say that these people are dirt because they had drugs, then you're not talking about individuals anymore, so don't do that. All right, so you have 11,000 people. That's probably, there's still around 10,500 still uh, waiting on their clemency petitions. What's the news for them? I don't have any good news for them. What do they do to deserve it, to get out? That's terrible to even say that there's some kind of a line or a litmus test. Now maybe, I mean, we all love Tyler here. We all love this guy. But why does he get the focus? Why does he get the clemency? Why does he get the headlines? I mean, I know it's because LSD and what? You know, like, um, he's white. Uh, there's been, he's been the focus of the over-sentencing thing for decades, for ever since he's been in prison, shit, let's face it, so, if you want to get rid of nonviolent offenders out of your prison, which, I, last I checked, there was like almost a million of them in there, um, it'd be nice to start by just getting these 11,000 right on out of there. And none of these sentences have been reduced either. Like, there was a situation that we talked about back here where uh, Obama has given people clemency and then Obama has changed the laws for these mandatory long-ass minimums. Okay, now get rid of these, these people that are in there over the 10 years that you said for crack or whatever. Get them out of there. Why are they still in there? 30-year sentences, or they've been there for 30 years on life sentences, 40 years sometimes a less than 20 anybody this is, this is no one in their right mind thinks that anybody should sit in a cage for 20 years because they had the wrong drug in their pocket all right rolling stone featured tyler in 2014 story on draconian mandatory minimum sentences two decades later now he's 46 years old he's imprisoned in jessup georgia tyler vividly remembers his first grateful dead concert which he hitchhiked 900 miles to attend in Rosemont, Illinois. I felt this energy, he says. I immediately knew I had found what I was searching for. Uh, his sister said, Tim was captivated by the tie-dyes and the people twirling. Uh, that's his sister, Carrie. And she goes on to say, but it was also sanity, acceptance, peace. Growing up in rural Connecticut, the two endured physical abuse at the hands of their stepfather. Carrie describes her brother as too trusting and a gentle soul. And remembers their stepfather instructing him as a nine-year-old boy to bury a litter of puppies that had died after contracting heartworm. Tim was punched and put down, she says. The deadheads taught him about the earth and the karma and positive things. Well, in August of 2018, he will be able to breathe some fresh air outside of that prison cell, outside of that prison, outside of that life that was taken from him. 46 years old. I'm 44, so he's two years older than me. Those 
those years that he was in there from the 90s till now, those were the best years of my life. I'm looking ahead and I'm thinking, yeah, it's still going to be pretty kick-ass, but man, that was the best years of my life. No doubt I'll have memories in them times, and even I was freaking chasing the dead around the country for some of that. I will never forget these memories, you know. I'll never forget those times. It was the best years of my life. To see somebody that had those taken away, and you can see the look in his eyes and pictures if you look at, look at pictures of him. Um, yeah, it's terrible what's going on. All right, Obama, looks like you got about 1,400 more to go.